The Prince of Wales is the title traditionally given to the male heir apparent to the English and later British thrones, currently held by Prince William, eldest son of King Charles III and Diana, Princess of Wales, but the title dates back centuries. The Prince of Wales, or Tywysog Cymru, originated with the Welsh rulers of the Kingdom of Gwyneth, a Roman Empire successor state that emerged between the end of Roman rule in Britain and the Anglo-Saxon settlement of the islands. Based in northwest Wales and forged from the Roman region of Venedotia, Gwyneth became the most powerful and prominent kingdom in Wales, with its rulers repeatedly rising to dominance and acclaimed themselves as King of the Britons before eventually losing their power through civil war or invasion. The first known use of the title Prince of Wales, or alternatively Princeps Waliarum, Prince of the Waleses, in Latin was in the 1160s by Owain the Great, King of Gwyneth from 1137 until his death in 1170, and considered the most successful of the North Welsh princes prior to his grandson Llewellyn the Great. The title was used in a letter from Owain to Louis VII of France in an attempt to claim his dominance and pre-eminence over the patchwork of native Welsh principalities and Anglo-Saxon lordships that made up the political geography of 12th century Wales. Following Owain's death in 1170, no other ruler is known to have used the title until 1245, with the exception of Rhys ap Gruffydd in the 1170s, whose kingdom of Dehebarth in South Wales became the dominant power for a while after Owain died. After 1245, the title was used frequently by further rulers of Gwyneth until 1283, when Gwyneth and all the other Welsh principalities, many of which were Gwyneth's vassals, were invaded and overrun during the Edwardian conquest of Wales. Then, in 1301, King Edward I of England invested his son, Edward of Carnarvon, with the title, who, while being born at Carnarvon Castle in Gwyneth, was half English and half Spanish, with his mother actually being Eleanor of Castile. Nevertheless, this began the tradition of granting the title to the male heir apparent of the English throne and marked the first Prince of Wales not of a native Welsh descent. But instead of talking about these English and later British Princes of Wales, in this video I want to take a look at the last native Welsh Prince of Wales, because he was quite a remarkable man and soldier before his eventual defeat in the Edwardian Conquest. So let us wind the clock back to 1245 when the title Prince of Wales was first revived. David Ap Llewellyn, King of Gwyneth, began to use the title in the final months of his reign, and the tradition was carried on by his nephew and successor, Llewellyn Ap Griffid, known as Llewellyn the Last, who styled himself as Prince of Wales and Lord of Snowdon until his death. And as you can tell by the moniker, he was the final native Welsh prince to hold the title. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea, and let me tell you about Llewellyn the Last, King of Gwyneth, and Prince of Wales. Llewellyn was born around 1223 in Gwyneth as the second of four sons, and by the time he was barely 18 in 1240, took part in the Barons' Crusade with Richard of Cornwall, the brother of King Henry III of England, which was the most successful crusade in territorial terms since the First Crusade, and returned the Kingdom of Jerusalem to its largest size since 1187. At the same time, Llewellyn's uncle had ascended to the throne of Gwyneth, and by 1244 Llewellyn held lands in the Vale of Clyde in north-east Wales. His father and brother were initially imprisoned by his uncle, the new king, but according to the National Library of Wales, were then transferred into the custody of King Henry III of England after a successful English invasion of the Welsh borderlands. Llewellyn's father died shortly afterwards in 1244 though, as he was trying to escape from the Tower of London, falling nearly 30 metres to his death. He is said to have used an improvised rope made from sheets and clothes to lower himself from his window, but as he was a heavy man the rope broke and he fell to his death. The window he tried to escape through was actually bricked up but is still visible to this day. Relations soon deteriorated between King Henry and David, and war broke out. Surprisingly, Llewellyn chose to fight on the side of his uncle, and meanwhile King Henry released Owain in the hope that he would challenge his uncle's rule and spark a civil war. However, this proved to be less than successful, with Owain taking up residence in Chester, which was actually fortunate for Llewellyn as David died soon after without leaving an heir, and thus Llewellyn remained the only candidate for the throne. After inheriting his uncle's throne, Llewellyn, Owain and King Henry soon came to terms, signing the Treaty of Woodstock in 1247. However, this was not favourable to Llewellyn. The terms they were forced to accept restricted them to the west of the River Conway around Snowdonia and Anglesey, which was divided between them. 
the other half of Gwyneth east of the River Conway was taken over by King Henry. Essentially, the kingdom was split in half, with the eastern half under English occupation and the western half co-ruled by Llewellyn and Owain. And after this treaty is where we start to see Llewellyn's battles begin, with the aim of taking over the rest of Wales. First of all, Llewellyn had to face a territorial challenge from his younger brother Dafid. When David came of age, King Henry accepted his homage, which was submission in return for a title or lands, and thus Henry announced his intention to grant David part of Llewellyn's kingdom. Llewellyn unsurprisingly refused, and so his other brother Owain, who had been co-ruling with him, allied with David to challenge Llewellyn's rule, leading to the Battle of Brynderwyn in June of 1255. Not much is known about the details of the battle or statistics of troops numbers, but we do know that it lasted no more than an hour and was a clear victory for Llewellyn, who then captured and imprisoned both of his brothers, consolidating himself as the sole ruler. Dafid, the younger of the two brothers, was soon released though and actually went on to play a key role in the royal government of Gwyneth until his defection and removal to England in the mid-1260s. Owain, though, was kept in captivity for over 20 years, only being released under the terms of the Treaty of Abercomwy in 1277, retiring to his estate in northwest Wales and is thought to have died in around 1282. After the battle, Llewellyn looked to expand his territory and his eyes first wandered eastwards, where the English still occupied the eastern half of his kingdom. The population resented this English rule, and it was only exacerbated by the fact that King Henry gave this eastern half to his son Edward, and during the summer of 1256, he visited the area in an attempt to quell the public outrage, but failed. Thus, a public appeal was made to Llewellyn, who that November crossed the River Conway, the dividing line between the two kingdoms, with an army accompanied by his now-released brother David, and with the support of the other Welsh kingdoms. By December, Llewellyn controlled all of his kingdom once again, except for the royal castle at Disearth, which was under the control of his brother-in-law, Rhys Fychan, who had pledged his fealty to the English king. Thus, an English army raised by Prince Edward, now the Earl of Chester, and under the control of the knight Stephen Busan, invaded Wales to restore Rhys Fychan, but was defeated by Llewellyn's forces at the Battle of Cadfan in June 1257, with Rhys slipping away secretly to make his peace with Llewellyn. Throughout the rest of 1257, Llewellyn aggressively pursued his goal of expanding Gwyneth's territory, managing to drive out his Anglo-Norman cousin, Roger Mortimer, remember that name, he comes back later, and after further skirmishes and territorial gains in the following year, notably becoming overlord of De Haybarth, the other most powerful kingdom in Wales, and incorporating Deneva and Powys as vassal kingdoms. And so finally, in 1258, Llewellyn finally declared himself the Prince of Wales. Llewellyn continued his rule for the next few years until he saw an opportunity to extend his power outside of Wales. Simon de Montfort, the Earl of Leicester, had defeated the King's forces at the Battle of Lewis in 1264 during the Second Barons' War, capturing both King Henry and Prince Edward, and in 1265 Llewellyn began negotiations with de Montfort, offering huge sums of money for a permanent peace, and thus the Treaty of Pipton in June 1265 established an alliance between Llewellyn and de Montfort, although Pope Clement IV actually warned Llewellyn against allying himself with the excommunicated Earl. Llewellyn was confirmed as the ruler of the entire Principality of Wales through this, and also granted some castles in the border regions. After de Montfort was killed in the Battle of Evesham in 1265, though, Llewellyn knew his position was vulnerable and so set about rapidly gaining a bargaining position before King Henry had fully recovered. In 1265, he routed enemy armies in North Wales and in Montgomery, defeating marcher Lord Roger Mortimer once again. With these victories and the backing of a papal legate, Llewellyn opened negotiations with King Henry and was finally acknowledged as Prince of Wales in the Treaty of Montgomery in 1267. The other Welsh princes submitted to him, and thus this, the Treaty of Montgomery, marked the peak of Llewellyn's power, with the Kingdom of Gwyneth dominating Wales. However, peace was not to last, as by 1272 King Henry was dead and the English throne was inherited by his son Edward. There was no love lost between the two, as Llewellyn had a long-term alliance with one of Edward's enemies, of course, Simon de Montfort. This alliance continued even after Simon's death, as Llewellyn hoped to marry his daughter Eleanor de Montfort, and in 1276, after a few too many diplomatic clashes over the years, King Edward I declared Llewellyn a rebel, 
and in 1277 invaded Wales with the intention of unseating Llewellyn and conquering the entire principality. The English force was triumphant in gaining territories in North Wales and managed to cut off the food supply for Llewellyn's army, forcing him to come to terms under the Treaty of Abercomwe. This treaty meant once again Llewellyn was confined to the western part of Gwynedd, losing all of his previously reclaimed lands. He also had to submit to Edward being his sovereign in order to be able to marry Eleanor de Montfort. He duly obliged, travelling to London and paying homage to Edward in 1277, and he wed Eleanor at Worcester Cathedral in 1278. The Treaty of Aberconway also importantly meant that while granting peace between Llewellyn and King Edward for now, it essentially guaranteed that Welsh self-rule would end upon Llewellyn's death and represented the completion of the first stage of the Edwardian conquest of Wales. However, history was soon to repeat itself when the Welsh population in East Gwynedd began to complain about the heavy-handedness of their English overlords and the heavy taxation they were forced to pay. By 1282, frustrations boiled over when Llewellyn's younger brother Dafid attacked the English at Hawarden Castle before laying siege to Rudlin, forcing Llewellyn's hand into a quickly spreading revolt that he was ill prepared for. The English response to this revolt followed a similar pattern to five years earlier in 1277, with Edward's forces capturing eastern territories including Anglesey and blocking the harvest. A notable Welsh victory was after the English forces on Anglesey tried to cross the mainland on a bridge of boats, but failed in this endeavour and were defeated at the Battle of Molly Don. The Archbishop of Canterbury actually tried mediating between Llewellyn and Edward, and Llewellyn was offered a large estate in England if he would surrender Wales to Edward, while Dafid would go on crusade and not return without the king's permission. In an emotional reply, Llewellyn said that he would not abandon the people whom his ancestors had protected, quote, since the days of Camber, son of Brutus, and rejected the offer. Llewellyn now left Dafid to lead the defence of Gwynedd and took a force south, trying to rally support in mid and south Wales and open up an important second front. However, this would see his downfall. There are conflicting accounts surrounding what happened to Llewellyn next, but if we take the account of his daughter, this states that Llewellyn, at the head of his army, was tricked into believing that his enemies, led by Roger Mortimer, here he is again, wished to submit to him. At the head of the army, Llewellyn approached the combined forces of Mortimer, Hugh Lestrange, and the English allied ruler of Powys on the promise that he would receive their homage. However, his army was instead immediately surprise attacked and engaged in fierce battle during which Llewellyn and his 18 retainers became separated, with a significant part of his army routed and fled. At around dusk, his small group were ambushed and chased into a wooded area, where Llewellyn was surrounded and killed. It was only later that Llewellyn was identified and many sources suggest that after finding out who he was, his corpse was decapitated and the head was sent to London and, quote, crowned with ivy in mockery of ancient Welsh prophecies that one day a Welshman was to be crowned in London. It was then carried by a horseman on the point of his lance to the Tower of London and set up over the gate, where it remained for some 15 years. Welsh morale diminished after Llewellyn's death and never recovered, with his brother Dafid also being captured and executed by the English, ending 800 years of independent rule by the House of Gwynedd, and the kingdom, along with the vast majority of Wales, was annexed by England. The remaining members of the house were arrested and imprisoned for the rest of their lives, and in 1284 Wales was divided and reorganised into six shires. Thereafter, the title of Prince of Wales was granted to the English heirs to the throne, and later British, with King Edward investing his son, Prince Edward, later Edward II, in 1301 at Carnarvon Castle, beginning the Principality of Wales under the English throne. So, that was the history of the Princes of Wales and Llewellyn the Last, the final holder of the title who resisted English domination until his eventual downfall. I hope you guys enjoyed, as always I'd love to hear any suggestions in the comments for videos. Thank you very much for watching, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.